What you guys got another video here for you on Windows 10 versus Windows 7 and which one is better so which one do you think is the better operating system now we're not talking about uh, in the past we're talking about right now in uh, 2020 which one comes out on top and which one should you be using in 2020 so first off let's start off with the biggest nail in the coffin for Windows 7 and that is the end of life it's the end of life cycle for Windows 7 since January 14, 2020. Microsoft ceased all, all uh, support for Windows 7. That means they won't be giving you any more updates or anything like that. You are on your own with that operating system. Now, that is a real big issue uh, for the future because obviously, maybe not now, but in the future, Windows 7 will become more vulnerable over, over time. Now, whether you're listening to Joe Blogs down the road who says, he uses Windows XP or Windows 7 and he's never been infected in all his life. Well, he's just one person. And uh, basically, there's a lot of people that will use Windows 7 and fall foul to other things like malware, ransomware and other security issues without any sort of support. So you can't be listening to fanboys on the Internet who just want to continue to use Windows 7 because they refuse to uh, give up on Windows 7 itself. Next up, let's talk about the updates for Windows 7 and Windows 10. Now, Windows 7 updates, of course, when they worked, they wasn't the very best in the world. They were super slow and it was a bit clunky, in my personal opinion. As a PC tech, I've dealt with this sort of stuff all the time. And if you was to come in here and have to roll out updates inside here, it used to take forever and it was a little bit slow and cumbersome. Now, the Windows 10 updates are a lot better, in my personal opinion. They do come down a lot more smoother. In the background it's a lot more trouble free when you're getting and receiving your updates there is some little uh, issues with the Windows 10 updates in my personal opinion one of them is they're a bit forceful uh, they have added in this pause area for home users it's slightly different they may have some other issues going on but the pro users do have a bit more control over this by um, pausing and also uh, making changes to the dates here to when you want to receive your updates so it's a little bit more uh, better with the Windows 10 Pro. The other side of updates is the actual forcefulness of it. When it comes down, it used to force the PC to shut down. They have sort of resolved that issue a little bit where you can change all of that by changing up here the update options. And also there is another issue with bugs. A lot more bugs have been coming through Windows 10 uh, when you update uh, Windows 10 all the time. Some people are freezing the updates like this update here. I've tried to install it and it causes me problems. So now I've rolled back and now I'm leaving this well alone until I find out there's a fix. Now this is a common thing for Windows 10 and this is another, uh, you know, falling aside for Windows 10 users. There's always problems somewhere along down the line for a Windows 10 update. So now people are starting to pause them and stop them from updating. But in general, Windows 7 compared to Windows 10 updates, uh, Windows 10 has a lot more smoother updating system and they come down a lot more better compared to Windows 7. And of course, without Windows 7 updates now, that's also another nail in the coffin for Windows 7 compared to having bugs with uh, Windows 10 updates. I'd rather have updates with a little bug here and there compared to having no updates at all. So that is, again, another nail in the coffin for Windows 7. Now, next up, we're talking about malware and ransomware. Again, without any sort of support, you are going to be vulnerable. Now, you can install an antivirus program. You can install, uh, you know, firewalls and stuff like that and try to restrict the amount of malware that you're going to get. But the problem is Windows 7 was always vulnerable to malware in the first place. It was never really that great at defending itself against malware. And malware used to get on the system really easy and disable firewalls, disable antivirus programs, you know, jack up the browser so you couldn't use the browser. And in the background, it'll be doing stuff, root kits. There was loads of issues with Windows 7, whereas Windows 10, the malware problem has sort of gone away a little bit. You don't see as much malware problems with Windows 10. And the reason for that is because the, the security is a lot more stronger on Windows 10. And some, uh, Microsoft is saying up to two times better than what Windows 7 was. 
Now I have to agree that over the years I've fixed a load of Windows 7 systems and malware on these Windows 7 systems were absolutely dreadful. They really were. They used to get absolutely infested with malware and become unusable. And this was a common problem. And if you asked any PC repair tech, they'll tell you they spent many hours trying to clean a Windows 7 based machine, including Windows XP as well. It was just the same. And they used to get really badly infected. Now with Windows 10, you don't have that problem at all. All you get with Windows 10 is the odd bit of adware. And you can go to any PC repair shop and you will not see an infested Windows 10 operating system. It's just not that easy to infect if you've got all the security features turned on. And that is basically why I think Windows 10 is a lot better system when it comes to protecting you against malware, even ransomware. It can sort of do some sort of defense towards ransomware. And then you put in your own antivirus program and firewall and now you've got a really super secure operating system compared to Windows 7. So Windows 7 with antivirus programs never really sort of did anything really. It used to let uh, malware straight on the system and it would sort of disable the antivirus programs. I've seen it so many times and I've made so many videos on that subject over the years because they were easy to infect and I used to get loads of videos that people used to enjoy watching. The reason why you don't see as many for the Windows 10 operating system is because it's not that easy to infect as it once was with Windows 7. And that sort of blends into the support and security side of things. So the support is not going to be there for Windows 7 anymore because Microsoft have stopped all support. So the security is then going to be a lot more bigger issue with Windows 7. So moving on from malware to ransomware to support and security it becomes a big problem. So that problem is not going to go away. And I've even read an article online where someone actually made a claim that because uh, Windows 7 has now become end of life, all the malware creators are going to put their target onto Windows 10, which makes Windows 7 a lot more secure. What sort of nonsense is that? I mean, that is really stupid advice. That is from a security site. I can't remember which link it was. If I find it, I'll leave it in the video description, but it's absolute ludicrous. It really is. Now, if you're using Windows 10 and you've upgraded already and you've got Windows 10, then you're pretty much good to go. You are going to be a lot more safer using Windows 10 than you are using Windows 7, that's for sure. So let's talk about privacy. Now, as far as I know, Windows 7 doesn't have a lot of telemetry uh, data collected on Windows 7. There is a little bit installed onto it, but not vast amounts. And you can deal with that a little bit better than you can with Windows 10. So Windows 7 is by far the best operating system compared to Windows 10 when it comes to telemetry data being collected. So we can basically give Windows 7 straight out of the gate the uh, the victory for that one because we know Windows 10 its whole purpose is to collect data and basically spy on you and that's what it's designed to do if it's not Cortana uh, Cortana collects loads of information you've got your uh, privacy settings here which you can come into all of this stuff is collecting data the diagnostic and feedback if you've got it set to basic it will still collect data. You cannot turn this off no matter how much you try and you can use third party applications. You can do all of the tweaking you can want to do on a Windows 10 system. It will still send data back. There is no way of shutting it off. It's built into the operating system and that is that you're going to have to learn to live with it. Some people have left this on full uh, send, which means it's going to send a lot of information. What sort of information? Well, the full send is going to be sending stuff that you type inside your search box. It's going to send your browsing history. It's going to send loads of other inf information back to Microsoft. The basic send will send stuff like your PC hardware information. It will send your software information. It will also send any sort of diagnostic data like blue screen of deaths, any sort of uh, information like that, that will get sent back to it. But the full send will be basically you can send into um, quite a lot of information so be careful not to have that enabled now when it comes to other bits and pieces with uh, Windows 10 it's been known that you have to go in here and turn off a lot of features and even then there is still 
sort of that grey area uh, of what sort of other information are they collecting. No one really knows the full um, the full damage that what is being collected because uh, Microsoft haven't been upfront about how much data they're collecting and what type of data they have give you sort of some idea or some inkling of what data they're collecting but not the full disclosure of it so you have to sort of worry about the privacy side of things on Windows 10. Now another big concern for uh, Windows 7 users was software a lot of people that were using software have got proprietary software that only works with Windows 7 and also third party apps and stuff like that that have to be run on Windows 7 hence why people were too sort of hesitant about upgrading to Windows 10 because they couldn't do it because they had to use Windows 7 to use their software now you could install uh, Windows 10 and then have a virtual machine for that software which is possible to do but you shouldn't have to jump through a bunch of hoops to get a piece of software working on an operating system that should support it so there is that sort of software compatibility issue with Windows 10 and the reason why they're trying to do that is because Windows 10 is a new operating system they are supporting the more branded types like uh, Photoshop Adobe products and stuff like that but the third party applications and, and proprietary stuff which is really meant for Windows 7 it's not going to be supported or a lot of it's not going to be supported on Windows 10 and the reason for that is obviously security uh, support and it also will slow up the operating system having to keep using old sort of software so every new operating system that Microsoft comes out with they tend to sort of um, drop a little bit of support for the older types of software and that's the sort of entice you over to the new operating system but this time around I don't think it's been so so helpful because a lot of people have been really sort of stuck they they can't afford to jump ship to Windows 10 because they've got a lot of software licenses they have to pay for and they're stuck in a hole where they can't get out you know and they have to stay with Windows 7 so it's not been very helpful uh, from Microsoft by not allowing them to use that software now they can make it backward compatible uh, with that type of software it's just that they've chosen not to for a lot of the software and the reason for that is as I've said is the support side of it you know the amount of support and it'll make it slower less secure and stuff like that so that's the reason probably why they're not doing it okay so let's just talk about hardware requirements now hardware requirements for Windows 7 Windows 8 and 8.1 and Windows 10 are identical there's no difference between any of the systems on paper but in the real world we know that Windows 7 will have trouble with driver support and that is a common issue so when you go into uh, your setup here and you go uh, device manager you will find that you may have issues with certain drivers and that's because the hardware um, hasn't got the right driver installed on it now you'll go looking for that um, software that driver for that piece, particular piece of hardware and you may find that it's not supported it's ended its life basically they've not updated the drivers for it it may only have up to Windows 7 sometimes they go up to Windows 8 and sometimes they released Windows 10 so if you're one of the lucky ones that has full support for all the hardware in your system and it lets you get the drivers for it then you may be okay it may be a sound card driver it may be a network driver it may be uh, some other sort of driver that you need uh, which is now got this yellow exclamation mark and you'll go to the manufacturers website and they've stopped releasing updates for it now what you can do is sometimes use um, say for instance a driver for Windows 8 and that might sometimes work so you might have an old printer there that uh, only goes up to Windows 8 you might be able to install Windows 8 driver on Windows 10 and it will suddenly work sometimes unfortunately that doesn't work and you will end up with a piece of hardware that doesn't have a driver and it makes it pretty much useless to you so you will have to replace hardware so that is another big cost for people that are rolling out to Windows 10 now most of the time Windows 10 does install on a lot of based systems that are running Windows 7 that are okay and you have no trouble at all 
but there is that odd occasion where you will run into issues like that and that can be another cost that you need to take into account when you're upgrading an older system to Windows 10. And then you've got the other side of things is when you get all of the drivers installed and everything is working okay, you've got that really important part is how much RAM do you have? On paper they will tell you the system will run with literally one gigabytes of RAM and I can tell you right now that it will be super slow. You will never be able to get, f you need more than four gigabytes to run Windows 10. It will run really really slow. If you start opening up tabs in your browser it will be basically grinding to a halt. So I would say at least six gigs minimum uh, to start even considering upgrading to Windows 10. If you haven't got that and you've got four gigs, you're going to have a miserable time uh, using it. And also the processing power as well is a big issue. If you don't have a lot of processing power and you have low RAM as well and you're running a mechanical drive, it's not going to be a very nice experience for you running Windows 10. Hence why you see a lot of old systems on eBay being sold for for certain amounts of money because of uh, you know it's just more trouble than it's worth so they just sell them off and then they build new systems but anyway that's going to be about it for this video i think that is as far as i'm willing to take the windows 10 versus windows 7 and which one is better i think uh, you basically know where i'm going with this windows 7 has had its day it's finished you need to move forward it's got far too many difficulties ahead of it and uh, windows 10 is a far more superior operating system than Windows 7 in my personal opinion. Yes, Windows 10 is a data collecting machine and it does have privacy concerns on there, but personally, uh, you're gonna have to upgrade at some point. You can't put it off. Your options are, if you wanna run Windows 7, you can run uh, all your software in a virtual machine if that's what you need to do, and you can stay on Windows 7. You're still gonna have that security issue uh, with Windows 7. Again, if you want to jump ship, you can jump ship to Apple products, uh, Linux based systems, Android, which will be an absolute nightmare to do. And of course, you've got uh, Chromebooks as well, which you can uh, jump over to as well. So the options are there if Windows 10 is not for you, you've got other options available. Uh, but basically, uh, if you're a Windows 10 user, which or Windows user I should say, then Windows is where it's at, that's where the mass market is and uh, that's where the businesses are. So it's not really an option for some people. Anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. I hope this one's been useful to you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. I shall see you again for another video tomorrow. Bye for now. Now if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.